Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning, friends. <laughs> I see a few elders in here. I, we need a speaker in the foyer where when church starts and announcements, we can know that it started. I'll have to repent. This morning I was standing in the foyer talking and I didn't realize the announcements had started. But, uh, so I apologize to those on the back row that couldn't hear the announcements. But uh, maybe we can do something to rectify that. I visited a church in Virginia one time and the Bible class teacher was sitting on a stool. And I thought, when I get that old, I'm going to quit. <laughs> well, I repent. I'm not going to quit. Uh, sometimes you just have to kind of relax and sit back. Brad said a while ago, this is a great day, isn't it? And it's a wonderful day. and a, It's a good day to rejoice and, and praise God and to be here with Christian family to, to look at his word. If, if you have your book, we're going to be somewhere around page 351. You know I don't follow the book very closely, but uh, our material that we'll be using starts on 351 today. Uh, if, you, uh, if you don't have a book, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, where to go in the Bible in just a moment. But, uh, it is, I'm, it's a blessing to be here. What a great day it is. Uh, we have many things to be thankful for. Uh, let's, let's start with prayer. Father, we do not have enough words or enough time to express to you how much we love you. To express to you, Father, the countless blessings that you continue to pour upon us. We're thankful, Father, for those blessings and for everything that happens in our lives to praise you. Father, we sometimes just look at the bad, but Father, you just do so many good things for us. We praise you for it. We pray for those this morning, Father, that are hurting physically and spiritually. Uh, we pray that they can have some healing. But Father, we know that uh, as life goes on, it's our desire to serve you, to love you, to tell others about you, where when this life's over, we can come to heaven. Thank you so much for loving us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I want to, sometimes I'll get home and go over the lesson, and I think, well, I meant to say this. So I want to go back to Mark chapter 4, verse 23. I meant to make some comments on that when we finish the explanation of the parable of the sower. Uh, Sunday morning right now, we are in the parables. Uh, we'll be getting out of those starting next week. Lord willing, we'll finish them today. But uh, at the end of the explanation of the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus said, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And I don't remember us commenting on that verse. But that's an important verse for us to keep in mind. And he said that several other times after parables. If you have ears, you need to hear. The parable of the sower was a complicated parable. A lot of them are very simple. They're just one thought and one. But the parable of the sower, that this, he went out to sow seeds, is a little complicated. 
because it talks about there's so many possibilities of that seed after it's sown. There's hard ground and rocky ground and thorny ground and there's good ground. And so that was quite a parable. And Jesus said at the end of it, if you have ears, you need to hear. I was reading in our book and it says, take care of what you listen to. And I thought, now that's not scripture. You know, it's he who has ears, let him hear. This idea of take care of what you listen to, that's not scripture. But then I looked at the next verse. I, I have the New American Standard Version. And the next verse after he says, if anyone has ears to hear, let, let him hear. He says, and he was saying to them, take care what you listen to. Take care what you listen to. Are there some things that we should not listen to? I see a few heads going up and down this way. Uh, maybe Channel 6 News might be on that list. <laughs> CNN. CNN. Uh, we disconnected the cable, so we have very limited channels, but I still have Channel 6, and I will turn the news on once a week or so. And they have the same format every time. First thing they give is where all the shootings were and what time. Uh, for your younger people, I've noticed this. Most of the real trouble starts after midnight. Uh, you know, it starts off, well, when they left, at 2 o'clock this morning, they were okay. You know, 2 in the morning, y'all be in bed asleep. Uh, someone asked me this morning if I watched the Auburn game, and I said, are you kidding? I went to bed at 8.15 last night. <laughs> we had a long trip yesterday. We came up from the lake. It's almost a two-hour drive. I needed to relax and go to bed. But I want to take this scripture a little bit out of context. He says, if you have ears, you need to listen. You need to listen to the Word of God. But be careful what you listen to. And I, I want to say that this is really for the young folks, but it's not. It's for all of us. But be careful what you listen to. Be careful what kind of movies you watch, because you're watching them and you're listening to them. Be careful with that because our, our brain is somewhat like a computer. Whatever goes in there is what's going to come out. And so we got to be careful what we listen to. But we got to be attentive and listen to the things that we need to listen to. Listen to God's Word. God is love. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. You know, if we walk in the light as he is the light, the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from all sins. Today is the day the Lord is made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My kids text me that about every other day. Me and Linda, when we go to bed at night, the last thing we pray is, God, give us a good night's rest and wake us up tomorrow. And our first prayer in the morning is, God, thank you for answering our prayer. We get another day. And so every day counts. But as, as Christians, as individuals, we need to be careful where we go, what we say. And according to Mark, according to the words of Jesus, be careful what you listen to. Any comments about that? I'm sorry I stepped back a little. Okay, got a hand. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, whatever happens to me through the day, that's usually what I'll dream about. Are, are y'all that way? You know, now sometimes I dream some weird dreams and I'm thinking, where did that come from? But uh, I was, I was uh, running a weed eater this week 
on not level ground. And so I'm kind of backing down the hill where I could use the weed eater to lean on, and I'm weed eating. And I guess this snake must have came between my feet because I don't know how else he could have got to where he was, but he was right there. And I'm weed eating, and then there's a snake. And before I even thought about it, I brought that weed eater. You know, I'm just weed eating really dirt. There wasn't much weeds there. It was dirt. But that weed eater caught that snake. And uh, it was not very kind to that snake. Linda said, what kind was it? I said, I don't know. You want me to bring you a couple of pieces? (laughs) (laughs) But guess what I dreamed about that night? Snakes. What a horrible thing to dream about. What a horrible thing. Sometimes I'll watch NASCAR, you know, where they get on the rent, they just turn the left for three or four hours running 200 miles an hour. And when I go to bed, guess what I dream about? I'm a NASCAR driver. Be, be careful what you listen to. He who has ears, let him hear. The next parable that we talked about last week was the parable of the mustard seed. And what a great parable this is. We covered it last week, but I want to uh, reread it. Uh, Matthew, I'm on page 351, Matthew 13, 31. He presented another parable to them. Now Jesus is speaking to a crowd and he's just one parable right after the next. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. A man took and sowed it in his field and this is the smaller of all other seeds and when it was full grown it was larger than the garden plants and became a tree so that the birds of the air came and nested in its branches. And what we said about that parable was the lesson for us is the mustard seed was very small, but it grew into something large. When, the, when, when Christianity started, when Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected, Christianity was very small. Jesus had 12 men that was his followers, and even one of them betrayed him. And so when the, when the church started, it was very small. But guess what? It grew to be very large. The first gospel sermon preached by Peter in Acts chapter 2, there was 3,000 souls baptized. And you read on down, it says, and the numbers were multiplied. Now, I don't care what number you multiply 3,000 by, it's going to be a big number. That's right. In the beginning, Jesus had 12, a very small start, just like a mustard seed. But look what the church has done. It has spread and has grown, and it's such a wonderful thing. And so little things are important. Now, the next parable is only found uh, in Matthew. He spoke another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. The kingdom of heaven. Now, what is the kingdom? It's the church. The church is like leaven. A woman took it, hid it in three pecks of flour until it was leavened. And all these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. What is leaven? Is it good or bad? What is leaven? You know, unfortunately, huh? Yeast. We were going out the door here a week, maybe two weeks ago, and someone was saying, where are y'all going to go eat lunch? You know, we go to McDonald's or, you know, whatever to eat lunch. And somebody said, the days of the pot roast are over. You remember back in the good old days? 
you had a pot roast and you put carrots in there and potatoes and, and you left that thing on low. And then when church was over, you went home and you had pot roast. But if you can remember back, we used to have them homemade rolls. And they stayed in the pan uncooked till we got home. And they were stuck in the oven. And if the leaven had done its job, they had puffed up real nice. Yeah. So we had pot roast and carrots and potatoes and this good leavened bread. Yeah. Well, well, now then, we, what's those things we buy? Kind of sweet Hawaiian rolls. Is that the name of them? Hawaiian rolls. Now we buy Hawaiian rolls for lunch. And then whatever's left over, we make something else out of them. Uh, we went to someone's house this week, and uh, they had uh, gumbo, and she had a dessert, and it was uh, bread pudding. Man, I, I remember good, good bread pudding. But this was bread pudding. But as she's explaining to us, she says, that's all the biscuits that we had left over. The biscuits didn't taste good, so I made bread pudding out of them. I hope they taste better in the bread pudding. Well, I'm glad they were very good. I wish she hadn't told me that. But. Leaven is important. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Have you heard that verse? It's in there twice. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, sometimes leaven is bad, is it not? Remember what Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. That leaven was bad leaven. So what really is leaven? It's yeast. But in the parables, it represents words. The leaven that permeated the kingdom, this writer says, is love. You take a little bit of love, you put it into a group of people, and it's going to permeate. It's going to permeate. Do, do we love each other? We need to love each other more, I'm sure, but we love each other. We try to take care of each other. Love permeates. Well, what kind of leaven did the Pharisees have and the Sadducees? They had a yeast infection. <laughs> They have a very good answer. That wasn't on my list. <laughs> the Pharisees, I guess we'd say, had a bad attitude. They resented Jesus Christ. They wanted him destroyed. They were afraid of him. Uh, they would stand there and see Jesus per, 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 uh, do miracles, healed a man, and shortly thereafter said, Show us a sign. So they had a bad attitude, a negative attitude. Can a negative attitude be leaven, even in our church? So we got to be careful what we listen to. We got to be careful about our attitudes because it's leaven. The leaven here is love, and we need to share that love. Linda is uh, still trying to learn the hard way of why we hug so much. Love comes from God, and God is love. That's right. Love comes from God, and God is love. And we love each other. And so what do we do? We shake hands. We give each other a hug. We give you a, it's good to see you. Sometimes in our coming and going because of the size of the room, sometimes we're sort of kind of rush that a little bit. But when people look at you and say, how are you doing? I normally say I'm doing fantastic. You know, I, I've got neuropathy where I can't feel my feet. 
You know, James Pepper, our dear brother in Christ here, fell this week. Bless his heart. I don't want to fall and break a hip. That's why I'm sitting on this stool. But when you ask me how I'm doing, you don't want to hear about neuropathy. You don't want to hear about an upset stomach. Don't have that right now. But <laughs> what, what do you want to hear? I'm doing pretty good. It's good to see you. I love you. Leaven in the church is love. And love will spread. But if we let our love, our leaven, be resentment, a negative attitude, it also will spread. So be careful what you listen to. Be careful with your attitude. Greet each other with a holy kiss. And that's I love you. I'm glad to see you. We have opportunities to meet a lot of people and, and see a lot of people, and that's fantastic. Uh, but in my case, names just run together. Uh, I'll introduce myself to some of y'all, and you'll say, yeah, I know. I know who you are, Brother John. I've been here 15 years. <laughs> but, you know, it's always good to meet new friends. Be careful with your leaven because you're the lump. Be careful with your leaven that you're spreading peace and joy. Remember last week we talked about producing fruit fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, comfort. So let's be careful that our leaven is the leaven of love. I, <clears throat> I wrote down all the scriptures where the leaven is used in the Bible and several times it is in a negative sense like Mark 16, 6. Be careful of the leaven of the, of, the, of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Be careful that you're not spreading ill will or bad feelings. So that's the parable of the leaven. Very important parable. Any questions or comments about leaven or what that scripture is telling us? I circled this right here in the book and said, be sure to read this, so I guess I better read it. It says, the parable, of, I'm on page 352, the parable of the leaven, the setting, of, uh, setting changed from a farmer sowing his seed in the field to a woman making bread. A word of explanation is in order for this unfamiliar with bread making uh, prior to prepackaged yeast. When a woman made bread, she pinched off a small piece of the dough kept it wrapped in a warm place. The next time she made bread, she worked a small piece into her dough and set the dough aside. The leaven would spread throughout all the dough, causing it to rise. She would then pinch off a small piece of that dough to use the next time she baked. And so leaven is a continuing process. That, and, and where it goes, it makes a difference. We are Christians, we are eleven, and wherever we go, we should make a difference. Spreading love, spreading cheer, being positive. Any, any other comments? Bottom of page 352, the parable of the treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid it again, and for the joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. Upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. We're talking about the kingdom of, of heaven. We're talking about the church. 
It's like a hidden treasure. Sometimes I just can't figure out why I am so blessed that someone loved me enough to share with me the gospel. Because the gospel is a treasure. And whatever it costs for us to become a Christian and walk the Christian life, we need to expel that cost. Here's a guy that found a treasure, and he went and sold, he sold everything he had to get that treasure. It's sort of like if we're going to become a Christian, we've got to go all in. We've got to go all the way. Yeah, Christ is God's son. He died for us. He's our Savior. By the grace of God, he sent Jesus into the world, and we have salvation through Jesus. And when we see that treasure, we should not hold anything back in serving God. On page 353, it says, The rest of the parables in Matthew 13 have been spoken privately to the disciples. The first of these go together. Both are men who located something of great value. First man unearthed a treasure accidentally. And while the second man found a long sought gem, in each case a man recognized the worth of what he had discovered and he paid the price to acquire it. These parables teach that the treasure of the salvation in the gospel can be found. Some find the gospel or the treasure accidentally, while some find it because they are searching for it. Perhaps the most common way people find the truth is usually are not looking for it through an associate with a friend or a mate. We, we all could share our stories of how we became Christians and, and, and how things worked out for us as we became that Christian. Uh, I, I had told you that uh, I had a friend, Miss Farley, that picked us up when we were little bitty kids and We'd go to church with her from time to time. And she went to the West End Church of Christ. And when I got old enough to drive, I didn't go with her anymore. And from then to the age of 24, I didn't worship anywhere. I was just a heathen. Didn't, didn't care nothing about God or worshiping. And I got married to this young lady. And she says, we need to go to church somewhere. She says, I don't care where we go, we need to go somewhere. And so I thought, well, the only place I know is the West End Church of Christ. And I think I'll take her there. And you know, I hate to admit this to you, but in the back of my mind I thought, I'll take her there. She won't like it there. It's a bunch of old people. She won't like it. We won't have to go back. I repent again. <laughs> there was a couple with, we lived in Irondale, West End Church of Christ was way on the other end of town. We drove over, the, now listen to this brethren, the day we visited, we left the church building and we drove home. We didn't go out to eat. We just left the church building and drove to our home in Irondale and there standing on our front porch was a couple knocking on our door. And Frida says, I think I saw them in Bible class. True story. I drove around the block hoping they'd leave. <laughs> and I came back. They're still knocking on the door. Now, we did live close to Krispy Kreme. And after midnight, they went on sale for half price. And so we did have a habit, being young, of getting Krispy Kremes after midnight. And we had done that Saturday night. And so as they came into our apartment, on the little table thing you have there, there's a box of open, an empty box of Krispy Kreme donuts. You know, you can see right where the donut was. So we had to apologize for that. But that couple lived in Irondale, and they, they were in Bible class where we were at. And they visited us. 
they were leavened. They were leavened. They were spreading it. And you know, they invited us to come back to church Sunday night. And I remember going, Sunday night? Y'all go at night too? <laughs> now this was 1967, about January. I was driving a 66 Super Sport Chevelle. Four in the floor, nice engine, nice car. And I said, well, we, we probably won't come to church tonight. You know, I got that old car. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'd like to drive over there. And, and his, this guy's name was Steve. And he said, that's no problem. We'll pick you up. <laughs> he was 11. Steve's not the one that taught me the gospel. But he sure led me there. He was 11. The parable of the treasure. Brethren, we need to recognize the value of what we have. You know, from time to time you'll see that someone goes to a thrift store and buys a picture for five bucks. And later on they find out that picture's worth thousands of dollars. You've heard those stories. We have a treasure, and we need to be willing to pay the price to walk worthy of being a Christian. When this man found a treasure, he, he went all the way. He sold everything he had to buy that one treasure. When this life's over with, the only thing that will matter is what's our relationship with God. So we need to be willing to pay the price. Well, we have one more parable, and we have some time. We might as well, look at that. It's your God. Thank you, Brad. You know, God's the most important thing in our life. If it's not, it ought to be. Right. Isn't it? Bottom of page 353, we'll cover this one, and next week we'll, we'll look at some other ideas. But the parable of the dragnet, and I like this one. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea, gathering fish of every kind. And then when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach, and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, take out the wicked from among the righteous, and will throw them into the furnace of fire, into the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's talking about judgment day here. On judgment day, there's going to be a separation between the good and the bad. Now, they're talking about seawater. They're talking about a drag net, dragging a net, and, and you get everything imaginable. And once they drug that net up on the bank, they would have to separate the good fish from the bad fish. Now, this was on, these individuals were Jews, and they were thinking clean and unclean. In the old law, they were commanded not to eat fish that did not have scales. I asked somebody one day if they liked catfish, and they said, oh, no, no, no. They're bottom feeders. I'm not going to eat catfish. Isn't it a shame? Is that, was that you, Brother Dan? No, it wasn't you. You know, catfish are pretty good, but they, under the old law, they run clean. They don't have scales. Uh, you ever had a good piece of tuna? And I'm not talking about that junkie buying a can, make tuna salad out of them, take church socials. I'm talking about a piece of tuna that is cut off of fresh tuna and laid on a grill and grilled. Under the old law, they couldn't eat that tuna. That tuna does not have scales. It was unclean. He says, you know, what I'm talking about here is judgment day. There's going to be a judgment day where the good and the bad are going to be separated. We cannot separate ourselves from the world. We must live in the world. 
what if we made a decision that we're just not going to go to any place that sells alcoholic beverages? We're Christians. We don't do alcohol. And we're not going to go anywhere that has alcoholic beverages. Can we do that? Huh? You're going to be eating at home. You ain't going to be eating at home because Walmart's got it all over the place over there. You can't go buy groceries. Oh. oh. But you can always go to Cracker Barrel. Whoops. Well, okay. I'll tell you what, we'll just do what we used to do. We'll go down to the bowling alley and bowl and get a hamburger. Whoops. See, we can't separate ourselves from the world, but know this. There's a judgment day coming, and there's going to be a separation. God will separate the bad and the good, and the good he's going to allow to go into heaven. I'm glad Brad said that. We can go to these places. We don't, just don't have to participate. Still makes me feel kind of weird, Brad, to be sitting in Cracker Barrel eating right. breakfast and the guy next to me is drinking a beer. You know, yeah. just, I just can't quite get there. Beer and eggs just don't seem like it ought to go together. But it's, uh, we, we cannot separate ourselves from the world. But what he's saying in this parable is there's going to be a separation. So you, you've got a treasure. You got a heart. There's hardened hearts and good hearts. You keep, you keep massaging your heart to where it will be good ground. You know, I told you I planted the seeds. That two bag, bag of seeds I had two weeks ago, well, I planted them. And I've been watering them twice a day when I was at the lake. And yesterday I told Linda, I said, oh, oh, I want to show you something. Come here and look. I said, if you use your imagination... You can see the grass growing. It's about that tall. But as I was looking at it yesterday, I, I found a spot where there's no, and I know I put seeds there, there's no grass. But I realized it had a coating of gravel there. So I got me a rake, and I raked that gravel off, and guess what was under the gravel? More gravel. So I raked that first gravel back over there, and I thought, there ain't going to be no grass here. Because, see, we have to keep, I'll go back, and I'll dig that gravel out, and I'll put some dirt there. I'm going to work on that hillside till I have grass there. I've got some, but I've got to keep working on that, those rocks and those weeds. That's the way our heart is. We've obeyed the gospel. We're Christians, but we've got to keep digging them rocks out. We got to keep separating those thorns out of our lives. We got to walk worthy because we have a treasure. And that treasure is salvation in Jesus Christ. And in Ephesians chapter 2, he explained that very clearly. By the grace of God, when we were yet in sin, he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And we're saved by grace, not by anything we do. What a treasure we have. And these parables remind us, if you have ears, listen to the scriptures. Be careful what you listen to. Let's close with prayer. Oh, I, uh, next week we'll, we'll be, we're going to be way over there uh, in a new section. Uh, I'll find it in a second. Well, on page, we'll start page 367. You got that, Brother Scott? Okay, got it. Page 367. Let's close with prayer. Father, we're blessed, and we, we know that, and we stand in awe of your greatness. And Father, we are thankful that we can continue to prepare our heart to serve you. Father, help us to be worthy of, of being a Christian wherever we go. Father, we have to go places that, uh, where there's sin, but we, we're not going to participate, Father. And, but we love you, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for this time that we have together to look at your word and to hear what it says. Bless us this day in your grace is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.